Today I'm going to talk about effective presentations. It is said that simplicity is ultimate sophistication. So making things simple is the most difficult thing. And this presentation will be in two parts. The first part is about effective PowerPoint. So how do you create a impactful presentation without any gimmicks? And second point will be, the second part will be about how do you deliver an effective presentation? How do you deliver the lecture in a more impactful way? Well, let's go through a few examples. What do you think about this slide? This slide is absolutely uh, you know, full of content. And you know, if somebody starts reading this, you would actually lose the concentration. You would actually not know what exactly is happening. So not a good slide, too overcrowded. This slide, uh, background, dog background uh, with fonts in yellowish color. Okay, and then the slowly appearing sentences on them. Okay. So all kind of gimmicks. Also, you can hardly read and strains your eyes. Not a good slide. This one, it's got a white background, but it's all in red. Again, it stresses your eyes. So you, you don't need to actually have that. So let's let's be smart. Okay, let's look at the first slide. Very busy slide, lots of content on it. Let's make it simple. Let's simplify this. So we will create a table. And these are psychological aspects which we anesthetists need to deal with. At six months, their separation is not an issue, but at six months to four years, separation and strange anxiety happens. At school age, they're worried about mutilating effect of surgery, possibility of pain. But when they're adolescents, they are, are worried about loss of control, coping with illnesses, long hospitalization is an issue, missing out from school is an issue. So these are make it very clear to the point which the audience will understand. This slide, again, busy, uh, simplify it again. Put it into simple points. So everything has been now broken down into points. And in this one, in this discussion, it was that psychiatric wards are separate from acute hospital. They are away from acute hospitals. They lack medically experienced staff who can uh, use news News is a national early warning system. So there was a forget-me-not report recommended recommendation which said that people with mental illness, these are older patients who have multiple comorbidities, and national early warning system should be important component of their assessment and care. Or if you actually love colors, you can put them into colorful boxes. And what you will see here is that the one in the, uh, you know, the yellow one, I have actually changed the fonts to black color because if I directly had it in white, they wouldn't be as visible as they're in black. Next one, what's wrong here? Looks like a good slide. There is a cartoon, but if you are actually going to talk about this, people will not be listening to you. They will be actually looking at the cartoon, reading what's written there thinking about it okay this is not required this is a this is a dangerous distraction this will interfere with your communication okay so you don't want to have any kind of this distraction you just simplify it and you can put it into like stages so this is the how i would actually put it it's a colorful slide as well uh, so ga for laparoscopic surgery makes uh, patients comfortable uh, because patient is comfortable so is a surgeon as anesthetists, it makes it easier to monitor the internal CO2 and the vitals. It's easy to manage the changes in cardiovascular respiratory system. And it also provides stable hemodynamics. Okay, nice slide, easy, simple, colorful, okay, impactful. When you have a presentation, you need to weave a story. Okay, it should be something like you're telling a story. There has to be a sequence, one after the other. There's a beginning, there is a middle, there is an end. Okay. You need to create a logical flow of events. Okay. Don't go 
jumping from one area to other area. So if you're talking about anesthesia for a particular condition, you talk about pre-op. In the pre-op, you look at history, you look at investigation, you do examination. You okay. So, and then what do you do when the patients comes to the theater? How do you prepare them? How do you induce anesthesia? How do you maintain anesthesia? How do you reverse the anesthesia? How do you, post-op care, what do you, how do you look after the pain, okay? So you need to have a sequence of events, one, two, three, four, five, okay? So you have to be, uh, this could be an OZ, or it's, this is just looking at the story board, which uh, was actually there. Also, we need to focus on what really matters in our presentation, okay? You need to have a clear message so when the audience go back home, they know what you have spoken about, what is the main key points, what is the take home message, okay. And no amount of razzle dazzle or slide effects will overcome any weakness in your presentation. You need to keep things simple, right? Okay, that's what I will keep it. White background, uh, black fonts, okay. So no razzle dazzle, no slide effects. This is what is more impactful. This is what simplicity is about. And don't create random list of things. People are not going to remember any of this. This is too crowded. Okay. And it is not useful at all. So you need to break them down into a, a number of slides. If you have important points, highlight the points. Okay. And again, when you are actually have a presentation, the fonts are equally important, the size of font. You don't want people to be actually skewing their eyes to look at what is written on your slides. Okay? You don't want to do that. The presentation should be readable. You should have appropriate fonts. Okay, And the font should be uniform throughout your presentation. Use the same fonts. No more than four to six lines per slide. And each line should be no more than six to eight words. Okay. If you capitalize the sentence, it makes for people to easier to read. Okay, it's a lot more, has a lot more impact. And the, the size of the phones, the size of the slides, these lines, they're all important so that the people who are sitting at the back are able to read it comfortably without having to stress their eyes or to skew their eyes. The take home message should be clear and they should be bold. For example, this was talking about breast surgeries and anesthesia for breast surgeries. What kind of blocks are you gonna do? And this is uh, kind of a whole of a summary that is bold, it is to the point. Okay, that's what you want to actually do. So less is always more. And simplicity is the key to brilliance and which needs lots and lots of practice. You can't just do that without practicing, trying to take out the unnecessary stuff, okay? In lean working, we call it muda. Muda is the waste. You take away the waste, okay, what you have is just the solid gold. So that was about the presentation, how you will actually make a good presentation. So keep it simple, keep it to the point, not too crowded. Just four to five lines, keywords, okay, four to six uh, you know, words in each line or sentence. Don't keep it complex. Have a story, okay. You need to have a flow within your presentation. So, next point uh, part is uh, how do we engage the audience? How do you keep them, you know, engaged? So, we talk about the six rules. The first rule is be yourself. Practice speaking on your uh, natural voice. Don't uh, you know know what rhythm you're going to follow, where you're going to pause, what is going to be your speed, how you're going to emphasize an important point, how loud are you going to be. Now this obviously matters, uh, especially if you're in a face-to-face -face meeting in a large hall. You want everybody to listen to you be, you need to be very clear. Okay, don't speak too softly, not too loud either. Okay, be very clear. And for this, you need to go through the other points. Okay. And you need to break your talk. Um, people nowadays don't like watching long movies. They would rather prefer a six episodes of 30 minutes each 
uh, which they can watch at their own convenience. So if you have a one hour talk, which is usually rare, but if you ever given a talk, uh, which is for, for an hour, you need to convert into four to six, 10 minutes episodes. And you need to give a little break in between where you can emphasize on the points or you can actually, if somebody has a question, they can actually ask questions and then you move on to the next part. So, uh, you know, have, have it broken down so that people are not bored with your continuous talking. And then don't cram all the material just because you've read so much, you don't have to have everything uh, in, on your slides. Don't exhaust your audience. You know, people will listen to you maybe for 15, 20 minutes after that, they're gonna get bored. Even if you have a very interesting uh, lecture, they, they may not have the attention span which you expect. And most people don't care about the details as much as you do. You read a lot. You think that because you read, you need to actually tell everything to the audience. That is always not necessary. You need to research your setting. And this was to coming to the, say, the first point. So know your surroundings, how loud you want to be uh, so that everybody is able to hear you. Okay. You need to know your audience. Who are you speaking to? Are you speaking to the trainees? Are you speaking to a group of uh, consultants? So you know you need to tailor your material to increase your relevance. So for trainees, you can go to very basic stuff. But if you start talking about very basic stuff with the uh, consultants, they are going to get bored. So make sure that it is relevant to them. Uh, rule number five is that you end early. Okay? Just because you've been given 60 minutes does not mean that you have to utilize each and every of that 60 minutes. You can finish early. Like people always complain about long talks. They never complain about short talks. Okay, so ending early is gives you time for question answers and discussions, and it will have the feeling of that so the time just flew by. So... Try not to actually utilize your whole of your time uh, for just talking. Okay, don't be afraid to engage uh, in a Q&A sessions. And the last rule is that prepare to conclusion. So ev after every lecture, you would have a conclusion uh, slide uh, where you would summarize your points. But if you have a question and sessions followed following your lecture, then make sure that uh, there is conclusions at the end of Q&A session as well, so that uh, you know, people have a take home message after the conclusion as well. So you say that this is what we discussed and this is what is your take home message is. Okay. And thank you for watching this. And hope this is helpful for your future lectures.